In this video, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of our new DIY photo shoot at home for our new podcast, Content Jefe. We're gonna be using photos from this shoot for our podcast cover art, for our podcast website, and for promotional social media graphics, and for a promotional video too. We're going to be covering setup, lighting, and camera tips, and at the end of the video, Studio Steve is gonna show you how we professionally touch up our photos using Lightroom. And together, we're also gonna create the brand new cover art for our podcast in Canva Pro. You got a lot of fun to get to? We better get started. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Pod Sound School where we're obsessed with all things content creation and every week we post really helpful videos to help you take your online content to the next level. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and come hang out with us every week. Photo shoots are an important part of any content creator strategy. They're a great way to batch create a lot of content that you can use for months to come, especially when it comes to a podcast. And while hiring a professional makeup artist, a wardrobe person, and a professional photographer would be ideal and an amazing experience, the reality is that many of us need to figure out a way to DIY our photo shoot at home. We're lucky enough at the Pod Sound School to have some pretty fancy equipment, but a lot of what we're gonna be covering in this video you can accomplish with really inexpensive equipment or even your smartphone. Okay, so let's start by talking about setup. So when we're talking about setup, we're really talking about where your photo shoot's gonna take place, what the background is, what props you'll need, things like that. So this depends on the concept that you have for your photo shoot and for your brand. Maybe it's something you wanna do outside, but if you do it indoors, it's gonna be a lot easier on you. There'll be less headache. And something that we commonly recommend to people is to use a solid colored background. That way you can remove the background later in your editing and that makes for some really cool podcast cover arts. And for our example, for this photo shoot, we're gonna be using a black backdrop and that goes with this concept that we have for Content Jefe. The concept that we have for this photo shoot, because the name that we chose for our podcast is Content Jefe, Jefe is boss in Spanish, so content boss. And the concept that we have for the podcast is better content, more money. And I came up with the idea of dressing up like mafia uh, jefes. <laughs> I don't know, like my ideas are crazy. But um, we're gonna be wearing hats and we're going to be wearing chains and cigars and some kind of like, okay, we're jefes. This is why we decided to go with this background because we wanted something dramatic and black and you're going to see us getting in our customs and putting makeup on and it's gonna be super fun. And that's pretty much it for setup. It's what's gonna be in your background, what props you're gonna need, what costumes you're gonna need, are you gonna need makeup, are you gonna do it indoors or outdoors? And now we can move on to number two, lighting. Lighting is really, really fun and it can be a little complicated and it can take some serious experimentation. And the good news about lighting is there's a lot of lighting available now through Amazon and other places with LED technology that makes lighting very affordable for a lot of us. So it's really easy to pick up either ring lights are very popular, but for a photo shoot, it's fun to get kind of a strong diffused light or a light that you can broadcast over a large space. So we really love these newer smart metal LED lights. You can adjust the color temperature and you can also adjust the power or the intensity of the light. And you can also order what is called a panel softbox or a yeah, a, pan, a softbox panel. And this is really cool because it creates a box that encases the whole newer light. It makes a nice soft diffused light and this helps to eliminate like harsh lighting and harsh shadows unless that's what you're going for. So we like these and what we're gonna do for this setup is we're gonna use two of these so that both Veronica and I can have a strong just kind of light to really just kind of make a, a nice look of your face. So we're gonna be using these and there's one other light we're gonna be using. Let's go look at that. This one is the Aperture 120D, the light storm. And this one's really cool with this panel here. This actually gets pretty hot, but you can also increase or decrease the intensity of the light. It's also really cool technology. And then we got this cage style softbox from Newer. And we'll leave the links for all of these lights in the description where you're watching this video below. But this creates this big diffused light. And this is a really fun light for a large fill light when you just need to fill your scene with a lot of light. But it can also be cool if you want just one big dramatic light. 
and we're gonna be getting to that too. And that's actually what we need to talk about right now. So with lighting, there's a lot of different techniques that you can put to use. We're gonna actually use two different kind of basic techniques you can say, which is one, we're gonna have a very flat light, so we want to limit the amount of shadows. The, this kind of flat lighting is kind of um, what? It's my favorite. Yeah, and the flat lighting is her favorite for a reason, and, and so many people love the flat light look because it reduces shadows, which can also hide signs of aging and kind of just make you look a little more flattering. That's why people love ring lights, because ring lights are directly on the center of your face and they just blast out all the shadows. So that's what we're gonna go for for the first half of our photo shoot. And then since Content Hefe and we're like these bosses and almost like these drug lords or pimps or something, that uh, we're going to go with a really dramatic lighting too. And to achieve dramatic lighting is to have one strong light source that uh, approaches your face from one side or the other, or just one strong key light with no other light, and then you'll get dramatic shadows. And so we may even play around with some black and white photos just so we have a lot of coverage. Those are our two basic concepts with lighting. Now, if you don't have any lighting at all, one thing you can do is to stand in front of a window, but you don't want the sunlight coming directly in from the window. That would be direct light, and direct sunlight is gonna be way too harsh to get good photos. You want it to be indirect light coming in from the window, um, and that will look really nice, and you just face the window, and you'll have some good photos that way too. Yeah, and here we're covering the, the window with mm -hmm. those beautiful curtains. Those are really classy curtains. Uh -huh. We'll also leave the link for those in the description <laughs> right where you're watching the video. No, please. <laughs> and lastly, before we get to it and start taking pictures, we need to talk about one other thing and that is interval shooting. What is that? Oh, I was supposed to ask you. <laughs> sure. That's good. But... What is that, Studio Steve? Well, I'm glad you asked, Veronica. <laughs> Interval shooting is allowing, um, oh, and I don't have an app on the phone yet for that. He doesn't know. Yeah, but interval shooting is basically just programming your camera to take a picture at intervals. So like every one second or every three seconds. And this can be really helpful when you're just two dudes. Or do, just one person. Or just one person um, creating a photo shoot. Instead of running to the camera every time, you can just have tons of pictures. Because so we're gonna take hundreds of pictures because we know that out of hundreds of pictures, there's gonna be a small handful of good ones. The other alternative you can look for is our camera remotes, and there's some really cheap, like $3 camera remotes that you can get, uh, many of them that come with uh, ring lights that you purchase, that will actually work through Bluetooth with your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So that's a way you can also do it by yourself with a camera remote. And also some ring lights come with remotes that you can connect to your phone via Bluetooth too. Uh, those would be good, a good option too. Mm -hmm. And I just said that, yeah, she just repeated what I just said. No, you don't, didn't say the ring Light. I did. I said they commonly come with the ring no, lights you that you purchase. No, you said they're ring. Oh, uh -huh. see, I'm. And I have it on camera to prove. I, <laughs> I don't listen. <laughs> so to quickly illustrate that, this is the Sony A7 Mark III. It's a favorite camera of ours. It's a really good idea to use a DSLR camera, especially the kind that allows you to attach different lenses because you can spend a little extra money and get some really professional lenses. Specifically lenses that are prime lenses are gonna get some really amazing looking shots that do a really good job of blurring out the background and just having that cinematic look that you don't really get with your phone. So any of the Sony mirrorless cameras are really awesome and popular right now. Also the Canon M50 is a popular one here on YouTube. You see a lot of people using that. We also have one of those and we love that a lot too. The one that Veronica's using right now that you see me on is the Sony ZV-1. That's also a way more affordable camera than this one. But let me illustrate with this camera how you can actually set it up for interval shooting. So from the menu button that you press here, from the first page, you can just scroll over throughout all these pages. See how they're showing you the page that you're in right there. You can scroll over until you see interval shooting right there. So interval shooting function, and you click into that menu and then you can turn the interval shooting on. And once the interval shooting's on, you can tell it when to start. So you can say after five seconds, I'm gonna start the interval shooting. And then you can tell it, take a, take a picture every, and we'll do every three seconds. And then number of shots, we can change this to 100 before actually, or 130 right now, but we'll just change it to 100. 
So it'll take 100 pictures before it will stop the, the whole interval shooting sequence. So this is also how you can use a DSLR camera to get extremely high quality time-lapse photography. It's the same idea basically. It's just, and you can just basically have it take a picture every one second. And that's actually what we're gonna be doing with another Sony ZV-1 over here. While we do our photo shoot, we're gonna get some time-lapse photography with that same interval shooting, only I'm gonna have this set to take a picture every one second as this track very slowly moves, as you see. So we'll have a nice moving time-lapse shot that's gonna get some behind the scenes video of Veronica and I doing this photo shoot. And that might be a fun video that we can use as like a website banner for our podcast website. After all, it is a podcast all about content creation and being content hefes. So we gotta have as many possible cameras as we can and lights and all the fancy bells and whistles because we are content hefes. Now, if um, they are using their smartphones, is there a setting that you would recommend? There are also apps that you can get on your phone that will allow you to do interval shooting. This one, Photo Timer Plus, is a good one. Here you can see it's the same basic thing. You can delay when the photo uh, interval shooting will start. You can say the number of pictures you want it to take right here. So you can take, you know, 40. It goes all the way up to 50. So you can take 50 pictures at once. The interval here, you can say every three seconds, every five seconds, and then it also has a sound that will play every time it takes a picture. That can be really helpful because you don't know when the pictures are being taken. And then you can upgrade, obviously, to remove the apps and other reasons they want you to upgrade. But there is a free version of this app. And then, yeah, you just say take photos. It accesses the camera and it has a gallery and you can download your photos that way. And then you can pull your photos that you take from your phone into Lightroom like we're gonna do at the end of this video too and touch them up even more. And then you can use Canva Pro to make some really incredible social media graphics and podcast covers. So we better just get going, Veronica. Yeah, let's get ready. I made a little brazo. Okay, so let's get in our costumes. Uh, we'll do a photo shoot and you can see us make fools of ourselves. And then we'll edit that. And let's yeah. get to it. Okay. Let's go get uh, put some makeup on. Oh yeah. Shall we? Putting my makeup on and getting ready for my videos, or in this case, a photo shoot, is one of the moments that I enjoy the most before uh, I get in front of the camera. I get to be with myself, and I get to get into kind of like the mindset and get pumped for what's to come. I usually play uh, Beyonce or some other uh, dirty hip hop, I like dirty hip hop, but in this case we can because uh, this video is going on YouTube. So what we're gonna do is, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm just gonna do something um, simple, uh, maybe some dark eyeshadows because uh, we're just going for for that vibe and uh, that will be it. If makeup will make you feel more confident and will make you feel more beautiful, then go ahead and do it. If it doesn't, uh, then just discard it and just show up as your beautiful self. see that we're all dressed up and ready for our photo shoot um, I don't know how this is going to turn out it was my idea um, I think it's gonna turn out pretty good oh, okay. I feel pretty good about it okay. okay let's take a few pics I'll throw it on here oh it's shooting already it's already shooting okay good here we go No cigars. <laughs> did you see what she did to my cigar? Did you see? Well, which part of those cigars you didn't get? Okay, well that was a lot of fun. Let's take a look at all of these photos that we captured by pulling them in to Lightroom. Okay, and here are all of our photos in Lightroom. And this is just the library where you can look through all of the photos. 
And what we actually did is we went to the develop tab here and Veronica and I looked through every photo and when we found one we liked, we rated it uh, with one star to start with. And then we would review our one star ratings and give it three stars and then just basically narrow it down between one or two different poses that we liked for our cover. And once you do that here in Lightroom, you can come up to where it says filters off and go to rated. And from rated, you can choose one star or you can choose three stars. And these are our three star pictures. These are the final ones that we chose that we would want for our podcast cover. And then after that, I went through two phases in Lightroom that I go through to touch up our photos. And the first one is to just give it the basic touch up in Lightroom. And then I also like to use a third party application called Portraiture, which is a really great application that really just kind of softens our skin complexion and uh, makes us look more youthful and vibrant. And I really like it and I use it for most of our photos. So let's look at this photo, for example, and you can see if I press reset, that's what it looked like initially. So if I press command Z, you can see the settings that I put on it where I just sort of balanced the color temperature out a little bit, put it a little more in the blue area, gave it a little bit more contrast, and I brought up the shadows because I, I felt like the picture was a little underexposed in the shadows, added a little more clarity to it and a little more vibrance to it to give it more color. And then what I did is I control clicked on this picture and I said, edit in portraiture three, and you make a copy of the edited version that you're gonna create in portraiture three. And I'll show you how that works. It's pretty fun. And then we come here and you can just basically toggle portraiture on and off. It's a very simple plugin and you can see how it basically makes our skin look a lot more youthful. And then if we come over here, you can see the portraiture version of this picture. And you can see it's got all of the Lightroom enhancements and yet it's got all of these. So now this picture is ready to be taken into Canva. And actually it was this pose right here that we wound up choosing for the pose of our cover. The only issue with this pose once I got in Canva is that Veronica and I were a little too spread out. And so the next thing I did is I actually went into Photoshop and in Photoshop, this was the original photo right here. I took, it took some time, but with the eraser tool, I went and copied this picture twice. And with uh, Veronica's picture or her layer, basically, I took the eraser and I erased me out of this completely so that I could just isolate Veronica. And then I did the same thing with me. And so there's two different layers here and that allows me to send both of these layers to Canva separately and move me and Veronica around in this pose in a way on the podcast cover until it fits just right. So it went from us being a little too far away for a square image of a podcast cover to now being able to manipulate our size and scale with each other on the podcast cover. So that's pretty cool how you can do that in Photoshop. And then you move on to Canva to do all of the other magic as well. So I think when you combine the power of Photoshop and the power of Lightroom with Canva, that's when you really start to get some amazing professional results with your graphics. And then this is the cover. This is what we have decided on for the cover. We actually did many different variations. So when I work through Canva, I'll start with one. You see there's many copies. So here I actually started with different poses in Canva to see what we liked. And I put the different poses and the basic different concepts. I added different filters to the photos to see what filters would look good. I played with different backgrounds and just made a lot of variations. And then with these variations, I sent them to Veronica and we reviewed the variations. I think it was this one that we liked the best from this variation. So what I did is I duplicated this. Here's the copy of that variation. You can see we worked with different combinations that we created of just this pose with fonts and colors and different styles of fonts. And then from here we chose our favorite three and then we shared those on Instagram and had people vote of what their favorite was. And the cover winner was this one that you see right here. And that's it, I hope you really enjoyed this video. This isn't meant to be a full blown Canva tutorial. I just wanted to show you once again, the completed podcast cover, the completed project that came from a whole day of work of us creating a new podcast cover. I hope you found that really helpful. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. We post really helpful videos for content creation, podcasting here every week. And come check out our podcast, Content Jefe. We'll leave the link for that in the description below. It's a brand new podcast, so we're hoping to release the trailer for this brand new podcast in a couple days. So come check out, see if the trailer's there yet. And until next time, happy casting.